built in 1869 on the River Clyde in Scotland. The Cutty Sark was one of the last tea clippers to be built and as a result was also one of the fastest. Coming at a time when steamships started to replace the sailing vessels they considered to be obsolete, the Cutty Sark managed to hold her own and became a historic ship in her own right and is still in use today as a museum ship. Join me in this video as I build and review the Airfix plastic model kit of this milestone vessel in maritime history. Hello and welcome to Model Minutes. Before I get started with the kit, please remember that adult supervision may be required due to the use of sharp tools and toxic paints and chemicals. Airfix recommends this kit for those aged 8 years and older. The Cutty Sark comes as part of a gift set which was on special for £5 in a well-known discount supermarket here in the UK over the Christmas period 2018. The front of the box features artwork depicting the vessel in choppy seas accompanied by what looks to be another clipper ship. Additionally, the included paints are annotated on the side of the image. The rear of the box features the painting and decal placement instructions which is printed in full colour some safety warnings and other information is also featured. Upon opening the box, the usual contents that you would expect to find in a gift set from Airfix are all present. First, I take a look at the included paints. These consist of small pots of Humbrol 12 copper metallic, 33 matte black, 34 matte white and 103 matte cream, all of which are acrylic. The paints are joined by a number 2 paintbrush and a small tube of poly cement. The instructions are to the normal style from Airfix, featuring information about the kit and the real Cutty Sark, safety warnings, tips on construction and step-by-step -step exploded diagrams, of which there are only 4 stages to the construction. This probably stems from the fact that this is one of the legacy kits in the Airfix inventory dating back to 1955. As I progress through the build, I'm sure that it will show its age at certain stages. Unusually, no scale is mentioned on the box or instructions, and I was unable to find one in my research, which suggests to me that it might be somewhat inaccurately scaled as a result, possibly as a result of less than accurate tooling design back in the 50s. The decals are to the normal standard that can be expected from Airfix, being well printed and quite clear despite their small size, and consist of the water level marks for the hull and the nameplate for the display base. Inside a plastic bag you'll find the 22 plastic parts that make up the kit. Immediately, upon opening, you can see flash and sink marks from the moulding process, and although the parts are well moulded, the detail is quite lacking and crude, which is no doubt a result of the age of the kit. Before beginning the build, I wash the plastic parts in warm soapy water. I do this in order to remove any dust or oil that might be on the plastic and help give a better surface for cements and paints to stick to. The parts were then left to air dry. The two halves of the hull and the upper deck were cut from their little sprues and then cleaned up with a nail file removing any excess plastic. You'll be able to notice that I've already assembled the display stand so that I've got somewhere to rest the kit during the build. This was easy to do with the various parts just slotting together. The upper deck was then cemented to one half of the hull and then the other half sandwiched on top. This was a little fiddly and required some persuasion. The fit was not great, again probably a symptom of the age of the kit. Throughout this build, I'm using Tamiya Extra Thin Cement instead of the included Humbrol Tube. This is due to the Tamiya version having good flow and bonding qualities and the addition of the applicator brush in the lid of the pot helps with accurate placement of the cement. Next, the masts of the ship were cut from their sprues, cleaned up and cemented into their relevant holes in the deck of the vessel. I'm building this as per the stages in the instructions which I do find ends up causing problems, but I'll talk about that a bit later. The lifeboats were next to be added to the model. 
Looking at the instructions, they were drawn with the hulls facing down, which is the way I glued them in place. For my research, I believe this to be correct for the two rear boats, but not for the forward one, which should be installed upside down, but the instructions were not particularly clear on this. The various sails were then cut from the sprues, cleaned up and added to the model. Care has to be taken to get the correct part in the right place. Also, they need to be positioned at a slight angle as if catching the wind, so a bit of patience during this fiddly stage will be needed. This is the single most difficult step, and I found it caused quite a headache. A better method would be to assemble the sails onto their mass separately before adding them to the rest of the model. But as that was not the stage as described in the instructions, I persevered with a little difficulty to finally succeed in this step. Now I'm ready to begin painting. As usual, I started with the lightest colour as the base to work from. The sails are recommended to be painted with the included Humbrol Acrylic Matte White number 34. I thinned it with a drop of water in order to improve its flow quality, but having had bad experiences with this particular paint in the past, I wasn't particularly optimistic about having much success. I found brush painting the sails to be rather difficult, mostly due to the fact they were already installed on the model. The paint had started to give me trouble too, so I decided instead to spray paint the entire model with a cheap can of gloss white that I had in my toolbox. I sprayed the entire model in a sweeping motion in order to give a uniform and even coat of paint over the entire ship. A couple of coats were needed, but I found this to be much easier and quicker than struggling with all that hand painting. Next, I painted the display stand with the included Humbrol 33 matte black. A drop of water helped thin the paint and improve its flow quality, avoiding leaving any brush strokes as it dried. The sails were then given a coat of Humbrol 49 matte varnish, so as to dull down the shiny gloss effect from the spray paint and give a more realistic finish. The deck of the ship was painted with the included Humbrol 103 matte cream, taking care to avoid incorrect placement. I used a fine brush to do this, but found it a little difficult due to the other parts of the model being in the way. Humbrol 12 copper metallic was then used in the correct locations on the masts and hull of the ship. A few coats would be needed to give a good uniform finish, which did not allow the base colour to show through. 33 matte black then made a reappearance in order to finish off the black parts of the upper hull. I did this freehand, managing to achieve a reasonably straight line between the black and copper colours, but the use of masking tape could be used here to help you if you need it. The top parts of the masts were also given a coat of this paint, but again due to the model being already assembled, I found it to be quite tricky. I feel that I would have achieved better results had I painted the majority of the components prior to assembly. A point to note for those of you who decide to give this kit a go. A coat of Humbrol 135 satin varnish was then applied to the areas that were to receive the decals. This satin varnish will help prevent silvering of the decals and make them blend into the surface better. When the varnish was dry, the decals were soaked in warm water. Humbrol decal fix was applied to the model in the correct areas, which will help soften the decals into the surface of the plastic. When ready, the decals were slid off their backing paper and carefully positioned. A further coat of decal fix was applied on top of the decals to soften them further. They were then left to dry. Following this, a further coat of Humbrol 135 satin varnish was added to the model to help protect the decals and give a uniform overall finish. I only added this paint to the display base and the hull of the ship, leaving the rest of the model otherwise untouched. And that's as far as I went with my build of the Airfix Cutty Sark plastic model kit. Here are the results. This kit was fun to build and I found that it was complete in the better part of an afternoon. From the struggles I encountered during its construction however, 
I'd recommend painting the parts before assembling, as you might be able to get better results, a method I'd use if I were to build this again. Dating from 1955, this kit does show its age, as it's not up to the standard of more recent releases from Airfix. This being said, it is still relatively easy to build and would make a great introduction to the hobby, being simple to assemble due to the low number of parts and reasonably simple paint scheme. At the time of this video, the kit was not listed on the Airfix website, so I can only presume that it is no longer in production, but second-hand versions or surplus stocks might still be available from other retailers. For the price of £5, I think it's a reasonable product and well worth adding to the collection. In conclusion, I'm quite happy with the results I've achieved building this historic ship kit from Airfix and look forward to adding this little model of the Cutty Sark to my display shelf. As always, let me know what you think of my build, techniques and finish model in the comments below. I'm also keen to hear your suggestions as to other videos and models that you'd like to see me feature on my channel, so feel free to post that too. All that's left to say is thanks for watching this video and don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and click that notification button in order to see more content and help support the channel. And feel free to share this video with your family and friends. Don't forget that you can also connect with me on social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. See you all again next time.